time when I was 15 to live with an aunt and uncle in Maryland who had a six-year-old son who had bone disease and had been in and out of hospitals. My aunt and uncle really didn't want me. They wanted my 16-year-old sister. But when they came to pick up my sister, I said, well, she's not going, but I'm going. And I had my suitcase packed and they're looking at me like, we really didn't want you, but they didn't know what else to do with me. They just kind of, okay, well, we'll go along with this. I had all my worldly possessions in that one little suitcase, literally about this wide, and that was it. And this was exciting stuff to go to. Uh, my aunt and uncle lived in Maryland, but it was right outside the Washington, D.C. line. So this was really exciting. I mean, I grew up on a farm in Kentucky, milking cows and gathering eggs and doing all of that. And from a little town that had like a thousand people, and I think I'm related to everybody there. When I left, there were a thousand people. I think there's still a thousand people, and I think I'm still related to all of them that's left. My life has just kind of happened. I had no real set course. I worked as a secretary for the federal government after high school and enjoyed the excitement of living in a big city. I came from a town in Kentucky with a thousand people, and it was just mostly family. I was always fascinated by politics, more so then than now, because now I see so much ugliness. I'm sure the ugliness has always been there, but this was before YouTube and the internet, and so you just didn't see it instantaneously. I worked in an office building a couple of blocks from the White House, and this was a time when the president and dignitaries rode in parades and open convertibles. The Secret Service would come to our office before a parade and scope out the landscape. We all felt like we were part of protecting our president. I guess because I had lived with my aunt and uncle in high school, I felt an obligation to help others. I have taken several teenage girls into my home over the years. All were going to stay just for a few days, but that sometimes turned into two years. One was a 17-year-old girl who had been in and out of foster care and had been living in a truck, and she was going into the military. She just needed a place to stay for two weeks. Well, that didn't happen, and two years later, she moved out. I'm still involved in her life, though she's now 40 years old. Another was a friend of my daughter's whose mother had committed suicide. I had a couple of nieces from Kentucky who were getting their master's or nursing degrees, and they needed a place to stay. My niece, who's a nurse, who's married to a doctor, will move in and take care of me when the time comes when I need help. She says this was payback time. And then there were others who really did stay for a short period of time. In addition, I have been a mentor to several girls who were foster kids at Joshua House and whose adoptive families have asked me to stay involved in their lives. They are all in their 20s now, and the jury is still out on how effective I have been in their life. They still carry a lot of baggage, and they still have a lot of challenges. It was never my intent to be an advocate for foster kids. I worked for Bob Thomas for 22 years before being elected to the county commission. During the time that I worked for Mr. Thomas, I went to HCC and then to USF and got a bachelor's degree in political science. After that, Mr. Thomas taught me about investing, about real estate, about how to read legal descriptions, about so many things, and especially about philanthropy. He was a very generous person that gave to many, many charities, but most of his contributions were anonymous. One of the most challenging times of my life probably was the four years I served on the county commission. I, but I have to also say it was one of the most rewarding times that I had. And people like me just wanted to do something for this community. We just wanted to do something good, and we always think that we can make it better. And frankly, I think most women go into politics with that idea. They just want to make things better. For Mother's Day this year, the Tampa Bay Times in interviewed several daughters of women in the community, including my daughter, and asked what their mothers had taught them. My daughter said, integrity. Wow, I never thought Shannon would say, well, baking cookies. 
or anything like that, but I never realized how closely our kids watch us and the lasting impression you leave, especially something like integrity. I do remember very vividly uh, an incident in my life that had a bearing on integrity, though at the time I didn't think much about it. While working for Mr. Thomas, I handled all of his finances, made all of his investments, buying and selling stocks and bonds, whatever. I learned how to sell real estate, I learned how to, to do a lot of things. And every Monday we had a meeting and I would tell him where his money was invested and you know what we had going. One time he forgot that he had a CD and it scared me so bad to think that I was the only person that knew where his money was and where it was invested. And so I made sure after that that his son and our CPA got the financial report that I gave Mr. Thomas every week. I felt extremely vulnerable to have so much power, to have so much control, and I made sure after that that everything that I did that had to do with money or fundraising, that we were completely transparent so that there was never any doubt about honesty. And I think that transparency was the reason we were able to raise money entirely from the private sector to build Joshua House and the Kids Place. We built Joshua House over 20 years ago. I spent a whole year looking for a location to build an emergency shelter, as there had been six kids from this region who had been killed either in foster care or in, at the hands of their parents. Now, I don't know how I thought I was gonna raise the money to do this, but I'm out there, you know, I'm the eternal optimist out there every week, half the day, every week, looking for a site and looking. And, and I always thought, okay, well, when I find this site, this site, God's going to tell me how to get it done. Well, it took a whole year, and finally other people said, you know, she's not going to give up on this dream. So they started helping me. And then we built the kids' place. We built the kids' place not because we wanted to do something for ourselves, but Judge Martha Cook had asked me numerous times over a year and a half to build such a facility. I didn't know if I wanted to work that hard because there is a lot that goes into it from rezoning and all the details of raising money and building a facility. And I have to give credit to David Wendell also. I was the visionary, I'm the person that knows how to get everything done, but somebody's got to do all the minutia. She did all the minutia, she did really the hard work. I'm the big, per the big picture person, 